Hey legends, welcome to our first official buy, hold, sell for 2024. Now this should be a fun video. Based on what I've seen, there's a hell of a lot of bargains. And I reckon most of the players that I've chosen today have a really big opportunity to make us a lot of cash in 2024. Now, I'm always trying to do things a little bit different, so I want your feedback. Is this style of video something you're really keen on? Let me know in the comment section down below. And with that in mind, let's get into it. Alrighty, so first up, we have the man of the hour. Someone that uh, I think a lot of people have already slotted into their teams. If you haven't, this is the guy that I probably recommend the most, and that's Ethan Strange. Now, he's picked up the center and half jewel. He's valued at 250k and has a break-even of 18. He really should be in everyone's team, either in that center position or as a half on your bench. I think he's got some serious money-making potential, and if he can end up kicking goals at the Raiders, he's going to be even more valuable in 2024. So next up, we've got Danny Levi, available at Hooker. Now, I'm not afraid to say I got this one wrong. 286k, break-even of 21. He's probably the cheapest hooker that's picked up a starting role for round one, so that'll make him really valuable. I'm not 100% convinced on his ability as a hooker relative to a Harry Grant or a Damian Cook, but I think at 286k, he's just really hard to ignore. And look, to be honest, I hope he has an absolute blinder, and anyone who picks him up, I hope you make a lot of money. Let's keep moving. Okay, so one of the things about the Raiders is that they have so many options in terms of potential bargains or money makers in 2024. One of those is Nick Kotrich with a center wing fullback duel, 261k and a break even of only 19. If he can maintain a spot in the starting team when Seb Chris comes back, he is absolutely worthwhile considering. And that's the other question mark I've got here, Jordan Rapana. Available for us at wing fullback. He will be playing fullback for the Raiders. 487k with a break even of 35. Now we know when he plays fullback, he's actually got a really decent average. I think it's in the mid 40s. So again, he's someone that can make us money if he maintains that fullback position. It really comes down to what is Ricky Stewart going to do with Seb Chris when he returns from his suspension. Okay, next up is Morgan Smithies, a guy I actually think is way too highly priced. He's very cheap in Supercoach, but not so much in Fantasy. 520k with a break-even of 38. He does have the edge mid jewel, and he is starting at lock for the Raiders. So from that point of view, very appealing. If he plays 80 minutes and scores huge, then he is going to make us some money. For me, it's not worth the gamble at this point. I really just want to see what sort of role he's going to have and keep in mind that he's come in and taken Corey Horsburgh's lock spot. So it'll be interesting to see how Ricky Stewart shuffles things around. Now, the last guy on this list is Zach Hosking, 584K and a break even of 42. Really pleasing to see Hosking in the starting side, playing on an edge. And I think the only real question I have for Zach Hosking is where the hell is Elliot Whitehead? If anyone knows, please let me know in the comment section down below because that's three players essentially we have coming back. We've got Seb Chris, we've got Elliot Whitehead and Corey Horsburgh. And you'd have to think that those three will all make their way back into the starting team. And what happens to some of these guys is a big question mark. So bye with caution. I think that's the, uh, the key message here. All right, let's move on. Next up, a couple of Cowboys. So we've got Kuli Kefu, Fini Fuyaki, and he's available to us on the edge. Now he is playing off the bench. Normally I don't like edge players playing off a bench, but at 272K and a break even of only 20, he's a player that we just can't ignore at this particular point in time. So if you're looking to secure a bargain edge, maybe a little bit of a slow burner, then Kuli Kefu could be the guy for you playing on that edge. Now, the other guy I've got here is a little bit controversial, but 468k for Jason Tomalolo is an absolute steal. Now, he does move from lock into the front row. He's got a break even of 34, and it will be very interesting to see how many minutes he's actually going to play in the middle. Because if he gets 50 odd minutes, then he could actually make us a decent amount of cash as well. And that's what it's going to come down to. How many minutes is Jason Tomalolo going to get in this Cowboys side in 2024? Let's keep moving. 
Okay, over at the Warriors, we've got Tane Tapiki, 388k, break even of 28, and he has picked up the fullback gig. I've got to say, it's probably only for a couple of weeks, but playing in a Warriors team with some superstars like RTS, Sean Johnson, I reckon he could be in for some serious money-making potential, even if it's only for a short amount of time. So keep an eye on him. I won't be bringing him in, but I can see why a lot of people might be tempted to do it. Let's keep moving. Next up, someone that I think most punters didn't see coming, and that's Joe Chan. Starting on the edge at 261k, break even of 19. I reckon this guy is going to get very, very popular very, very quickly. He's definitely beat out other players that we thought we'd get, players like Kane Bradley. So it'll be really interesting to see if he maintains that position long term and what sort of impact he can have in this Storm team. Okay, so next up we have Kyle Flanagan here in the halves, 349k with a break even of 25. He's pretty cheap, but if it came down to Kyle Flanagan or Ethan Strange, I think I'm picking Ethan Strange every day of the week. But definitely somebody to consider if you are strapped for a, uh, a half and don't have a lot of cash, he could fill that void for you. Now, I haven't picked Eisenhuth or Viliami Fafida because Luciano Leilua is now only on a one-week suspension. And I think what happens is Fafida gets punted and Eisenhuth moves from the starting team onto the bench. So until that Dragons pack is settled, I don't know if I feel comfortable recommending any of those guys at this particular point in time. So let's keep moving. Okay, over to the Doggies. And they've given us a couple of guys to consider. Drew Hutchison playing in the halves, 400k with a break even of 29. I don't think he's going to set the world on fire. And again, I'd be choosing Ethan Strange over Drew. But you never know. Look, if you've got room on your bench, I don't think he's the worst option for an emergency. And I do think he will make a decent bit of coin. Now, Jacob Carraz, personally, I'm not sold. 556k with a break even of 40. What I do like is he's got the wing fullback center jewel. So many punters are onto him. I think he could be interesting if you have the money to burn. Unfortunately, I'm not in that position, so I won't be picking him up. But I can definitely understand why some people are. Now, I haven't added Black Lake Taff, because to be honest, I just can't see it long term. I just don't think he's in the same league as a Ponga or a Latrell Mitchell or James Tedesco. So I don't see it working long term. He's definitely a decent price and I can see why people are jumping on him. But for me, he's a no-go zone at this particular point in time. Let's keep moving. Okay, a trio of Bulldogs here as well. Now, the one player who isn't on this list for me is Josh Corrin, which is really disappointing. I had him pretty much locked in over the last few weeks, but he's been shifted to the bench mostly because Jamin Salmon, at only 289k with a break-even of 21, has managed to has managed to secure that start lock position he now has the edge mid jewel which makes him very valuable and if he can come on and play 70 80 minutes then he is going to make an absolute mountain of cash and he's another player which i would reckon needs to be in just about everyone's team now the guy beside him, Poesa for Armasili, 300k, break even of 22, starting at prop. I think this guy has some serious value as well. The real question here for me is how many minutes is he likely to get? Now, I don't know a lot about him. And he does have Sam Hughes on the bench, who no doubt will come in and steal some of Poesa's minutes. And Sam Hughes is only 250k with a break even of 18. So some serious value in the forwards for the doggies. And it'll be interesting to see that forward rotation and exactly how many minutes these guys get or whether they have to uh, to share it. So that'll be very interesting indeed. Let's keep moving. Okay, so up on the Gold Coast, 279k for Keanu Keeney. He'll pick up that wing fullback spot thanks to an injury to Jaden Campbell. So I reckon he's got it for at least two or three weeks. He'll make us a little bit of cash, but I reckon we've got to be ready to uh, to punt him when Campbell returns. So just keep that in mind if you're going to go with Keeney. And, uh, and Keeney's in my side as well. Okay, over at the Sharkies, we've got Royce Hunt, 355k. He does represent some pretty good value, break even of 26 which is a very good price point for a starting prop. He really did well in the trials and is someone I'm interested in. He may be an option for those looking to uh, trade out of Spencer Lienu next week if uh, Lienu gets suspended, so one to watch as well. Okay, moving on to the cells. Unfortunately, here's a couple of guys that we were pretty excited about. We've got Bailey Simonson, 
We were keen on him when he was in centre, but he's been pushed to the wing, and I think on the wing, he's not as valuable. Now, we've also got Lusick and Hands. Brad Arthurs promised that one of them would be an 80-minute hooker. And you know what? That could still turn out to be true if uh, Lusick plays the, uh, the full 80 minutes as hooker and Hands only comes on as a utility. That'll be very interesting. So look, that could happen. But given that Hands is sitting on the bench, I just don't feel confident running with either Lusick or Hands at this particular point in time. So for me, if you've got them in your team, give them the punt and go with someone like a Danny Levi or maybe even trade up to an Appy Coruscant. Okay, next up, the uh, the Dolphins. The Dolphins have really sort of thrown a whole bunch of surprises at us. So Isaiah Katoa, he's been punted for Cody Nicarima. Ewan Aitken doesn't make the uh, the starting 17. Jake Avarillo, Jared Wallace, even without Tom Gilbert, all miss out. So I've got to say that was a real surprise packet, and it will be interesting to see how the Dolphins go without these guys to uh, kick off the season. So let's keep moving. Okay, so Scott Sorensen, nowhere to be seen. If you've got him in your side, give him the punt. And unfortunately, Bronson Cherry also misses the 17. So I think he's in the uh, the 18th spot for the Doggies. So if you've got him in your side, it's time to uh, to move on. Next up, Sean Bloor. So we were keen on Sean Bloor. I had him in my team for a little while. Unfortunately, 18th man for the Storm. He needs to be punted as well. And Kane Bradley, we were oh so close to getting him in as a wing fullback, but he's also missed the 17, which is a bit unfortunate. So so if you've got either of these two guys, now is absolutely the time to uh, punt them. Now, interestingly, if we look at the ownership of Eero and Stewart, these guys are still owned by a whole bunch of fantasy players. So this is really just a reminder to say, look, Eero hasn't made the starting 17. He's actually 18th man for the Sharkies. And Chevy Stewart is unfortunately also nowhere to be seen. So if you've got these two guys in your team, it's time to give them the punt. Now, another guy... Now, another guy that sits in that boat is also Jed Cartwright. Now, I know he's cheap, but he just also hasn't made the starting 17 and is sitting in the 18th man spot for the Newcastle Knights. Thomas McKayley is also on the extended bench and outside the 17 up at the Cowboys. So if you've got either of these guys, give them the punt as well. Now, we don't have any holds simply because, you know, it's round one, but we will do a few of these in the coming weeks. So there you go, guys. Look, that is the video. Let me know if you've liked this new format, this buy, hold, sell, little bit color coordinated. I didn't just want to read off a team sheet. I really wanted to put in a little bit of effort and just go over some of the players that I was looking at, particularly from a buy point of view and players that I think a lot of people should be looking to either sell or move on from. And next week, you know, here in the yellow, we've got the, uh, the hold. So there you go. Let me know. You know what to do. If you've liked this video, give me a big thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, guys, get involved in the conversation via the comment section down below. And I'll see you all in the next video.